Hello fellow classmates, my presentation is on John D. Damiak, also known as Ivan the Terrible. Basically, in 1951, he came to the United States on a visa. In 1975, he was put on a Nazi war criminal list where he was then prosecuted. It was said that he was a guard in the Nazi concentration camps in Poland. In 1981, his visa was revoked because he lied about his Nazi affiliations. One of the surviving Nazi victims came forward and identified him as Ivan the Terrible. It was said that he ran the gas chambers and tortured prisoners in the camp. It was said that he killed up to 28,000 people. There were five main eyewitness survivors that identified him by two small photographs. This was kind of controversial though, because they use his modern photographs to compare what he looked like 35 years earlier when this event happened. Um, one of the big turning points in the prisoners who testified was Elijah Rosenberg. He asked John to remove the glasses during court, shake his hand, and say shalom. And his response was he stumbled backward and said undeniably that it was him, Ivan the Terrible. Um, one of the terms that my reading brought out was unconscious transference. It's when a witness makes incorrectly identifies the face seen in one context of an innocent bystander as belonging in a different context, the perpetrator. So it's basically confusing the two. Um, so then from there, um, attorney Mark O'Connor was on behalf of John. Um, he used Elizabeth Lodith, who was a human memory eyewitness identification researcher, said to be top 100 most influential psychologists. She basically explained how confidence and recollection of an event is not always related to the accuracy of memory. Um, she did decline to take the case because she was Jewish herself and had personal ethical political issues with the case, but she did recommend her colleague, William Wagner. He raised many questions. Some consisted of facial recognition, positive response bias, and specific response bias. He talked about his study on facial recognition, which he conducted on college students. This was very controversial, where Michael Shaped was the cross-examiner in Wagner's expert testimony. He basically said that you can't really apply the student's subjects in a laboratory setting to real-life conditions. Um, he got Wagner to concede that the circumstances of the Nazi, Nazi death camp survivors were much different from college students who were tested and had never met the prison guard Ivan the Terrible. So that was a big thing in the case itself. Um, he also um, kind of went in to explain how Wagner's credibility should be looked at. He had 86 publications, but none addressed the issue of photo arrays. Also, only one out of his 40 cases had to do with suspect identification from photographs or lineups. So this was a big thing being that he was convicted on photographs. Um, with that being said, um, Shaped won in trial. So Ivan was convicted and sentenced to death. Wagner kind of stood behind him and said that he didn't believe there was enough scientific evidence to convict him and that he believes that he did no wrong. Um, in 1990, May 14th, um, John put an appeal to the Israel Supreme Court. And then in 1993, the Supreme Court of Israel reversed the lower court's decision because all charges were released because of newly discovered evidence on someone else being Ivan the Terrible. So he got off. However, in 1989, he returned to the U.S. with full citizenship, but he was then later deported because of his lying about Nazi affiliations. Um, over time, though, after, he faced many struggles with being convicted over and over again. At 91 years old in 2012, he died. So you could see 
to this very long life. Um, this case remains one of the classics in forensic psychology because of the question and the accuracy of eyewitness identification and criminal prosecutions. So I hope you learned a lot and hopefully you see the importance of eyewitness testimony in this case. Have a great day.